Hey everybody, I'm just uh, kind of showing the new uh, updates, some of the more important updates in the in um, in Premiere Pro CC 2015, some of the 2015 updates. I'll, uh, first of all, just kind of want to talk about the splash screen that first comes up. Uh, very simple here. Um, actually, when the fir when it first came up, it actually started up on this getting started thing right here, which actually kind of demos a lot of the new updates. And they'll it's kind of a cool thing because as they have new updates and they have new things uploaded to uh, added on to uh, CC, they'll be able to show, demonstrate it here in these little welcome screens as long as you're online. Uh, but you can just simply click on uh, create here and it will bring up the typical splash screen that we're used to, just different color and everything. And you have all the recent uh, stuff you've worked on over here in your sync settings, same as before, and uh, new projects over here. So, And then if you use Premiere, if, if you use uh, Premiere Clip, then you can actually uh, convert and open them up in, and convert them over to Premiere Pro. Uh, but I'm just going to create a new project here, and uh, kind of the same as before. But I'm just going to put this on my desktop and and get on with the demo here. So, all right. Kind of second thing I want to show is uh, this new little panel that they have at the top here. If uh, they if this is not showing and you've opened up a pre previous project and this thing is not showing, you can just go up to window, go under workspaces, and if you choose something like editing, you can go to, once this is selected, if you had a previous project that was rearranged and you open up that project, this might not show. So you just go up to workspaces and tell it to reset to the saved layout and it will bring open their new layout here. And there's their new layout. This is pretty cool because you can just quickly click on these things up here instead of going under the window and workspaces and you can have kind of quick access to um, the, the layout that you may need. Uh, one additional the one that they have here that I really like is this color one. We will get into this. This shows this color one specifically is different from the color correction. You can do the typical color correction under Premiere, but this one you can uh, under color it brings open the Lumetri color panel, which is new to Premiere, and we will get into that as well. So that's the second thing I want to show. Uh, quite easy to use. You just click on these. You can you can make your own uh, layouts, and you can save them as well. Um, but like I said, if you if you mess something up and move rearrange some windows or something like this, and have these windows kind of rearranged, you can just go up to Window, Workspaces, and as long as I'm selected Editing, uh, we're going to re reset to Saved Layout, and it goes back to normal. And there we go. So pretty cool. Other feature I want to show is I want to show the uh, morphing feature, the the morph cut that they have now. The morph cut is pretty cool because if you're editing a lot of uh, interview footage, you can um, come in here and you cut out, cut out uh, these little gaps where there's ums and ahs and pauses and some of the uh, repetitive or information that the interviewee may be giving, and you can cut those out. And if you don't have B-roll to cover up the edits, the the jump cuts, then uh, the, what the morph cut does is it blends the two cuts together and tries to make it look like it has no space that was eliminated in between. So let's demo that. So I'm going to go uh, through this interview here. There's a kind of a pause right here where he pauses and he's thinking for a second. Right there he thinks for a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that pause out. Right there. And after that pause is cut, I'm going to move along here. I'm going to do this a few times. I'm going to move along. Here's another pause where he pauses and thinks for a second. I'm going to cut out that extra time there. And as we move along down here, you'll hear an um. Exciting. And, um right there, that um, and he looks at the paper and looking, uh, trying to get on to his next point. So I'm going to cut out that um as well. And same thing, you've cut out like a re um, redundant information. Uh, let's pretend like right here is a big section that we want to cut out. Right there, we'll cut out that much of his interview right there. So now we've shortened this interview, we've got just the parts that we want, and if we don't have enough B-roll to cover these jump cuts, uh, watch this as we get to the edit here, you'll notice. You'll see that jump cut, because right here he's got his head completely turned to the side, then it cuts and he's got his head back. So that's going to be kind of a tough one to handle. Same here, there's a little jump cut. So you see these jump cuts, and there he's looking down on the, on the new edit, right there. So I'm going to go under effects and it's under video transitions in the dissolve folder but I'm just going to type it in here type in morph there it is right there there's our morph cut so I'm going to grab that morph cut I'm going to drop it onto each one of these edits sometimes you have to if they look a little weird you have to kind of change the length of these things and um, you'll notice here when I drop these on the edits uh, it'll analyze in the background it'll show up as red if your video card is is rendering there and once it's rendered these things will change back to the yellow real-time preview color so there goes one right there. That one's done. Let's see how this one does. 
that one's done. And these really only take a few seconds to, to render. They're all done now. Um, because I'm rec recording video in the background, I'm going to render this all to, to green so it just like plays back full time. And sometimes, depending on your graphics card, um, these play when they're playing back, they'll look a little jumpy when it hits these effects, uh, which is fine. It, it doesn't mean that it didn't work. Uh, so what I will do is I'll go up to Sequence and Render into Out, and it will render my timeline. Yeah, you can put an in and out point on your timeline if you want to and just render that. And then it will just build a rendered clip of that effect, and then it will play back a lot better. Then you'll really get a a good sense of how it's playing back. Let me do that. Let me show you how we did that. If you want to render just one effect, you'll do an, you can put I and O for a range, and then you can go up to sequence and go down to render um, into out, and it will render that. It'll force render that section there and make it green, and it will play back, and it won't be relying on your video card, whether your video card's fast or not, um, and then you'll be able to really see what your effect looks like. Uh, option X to clear that, but now let's play through these and see how these uh, see how this morph cut works here. And that actually worked a little pretty well there. You can tell there's something kind of weird going on, and that was a pretty extreme move because he, he turned his head way to the side. So you might have to change this, and manipulate it a little bit till it looks good. Let's look, let's look at the other ones. That one lo morphed pretty well there. Uh, and what this does is it does like a, a, a frame blending between one clip to the other to get it to look like uh, there wasn't an edit there. Let's watch this one. And that one's okay. Some of these, if you look really close, you can see, but most people watching this will never even notice these. And that one was okay, but sometimes this will help if you have if you don't have a lot of B-roll to cover. And if there's a lot of movement up from the person, you're going to be you're going to notice it more. But if it's more like a talking head, then it will be um, then it will, that then it usually does a really good job of it. So so that's one other helpful tool. One thing I I want to show now is the, the I think the biggest change they've made to the 2015 updates will be the uh, Lumetri panel. Let's show that. Okay, with the Lumetri panel, once you're ready to start color correcting, um, it's a nice little powerful uh, color corrector that you can use. Um, it's a little different than the uh, than the Premier color correction. In fact, I, I think that I prefer it over the regular um, Premier color correction because it comes with scopes and everything, and it's got quite a bit of features. Uh, it's not as quite as powerful as Speed Grade, but it still has a lot of really kind of nice basic features to, to get what you need if you're in a hurry. Uh, I'm going to click on the color panel here for the color layout, and it'll bring open a couple new things. First of all, it's got this Lumetri panel that's been added here, and it also has, if you click on this tab over here in your source area, the, it'll bring up Lumetri scopes. And whatever scopes you want up uh, for color correction, you can right-click in here and check them or uncheck them. You can right click on the scopes area over here. You can say, I just want um, like the hue, luminance, and saturation sliders or the vector scope YUV. Um, the YUV is the more common one. Um, where you've got these kind of limits out here. These, uh, uh, if, if you want to get more tutorial on, on color correction, the way the scopes uh, work, look at some of my tutorials in Premiere and in Speed Grade that talk about scopes. Um, but right now, I'm just going to I'm going to leave up the vector scope uh, histogram. I'm going to take away here. And uh, and I'm gonna let's let's do two. I'm gonna do a waveform. But you got the the Parade RGB, which is helpful. Right now, I'm just gonna do waveform and vector scope. And there we go. And actually, you can right click on these and you can go down under Parade types and you can tell it to just show the the show it in white or in colors or a whole bunch of different things. If you want your waveform type just showing Luma, uh, there you go. If you want it showing the RGB, I mean, it's it's got basically everything you need in here. Um, all right. Well, let's show. Let's demonstrate this panel over here. Uh, this is kind of cool because all you have to do is have a clip selected here, loaded and selected. And over here in the panel, uh, what you can do is, uh, first of all, let's go through the basic correction. The basic correction, any of these you just click on, it'll open up that panel. You've got the basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels, and vignette. Uh, so the basic correction is your basic temperature here. This, if this shot's too cool, you can grab your temperature and just start sliding it and warm it up. And you can see that warming up. Or you can grab the tint. you got tint and temperature, which are two typical tools in uh, color correction. This is more like the magenta, yellow, and green. And this is more like the red, and red green, and purple uh, sliders right there to get more bluish and reddish or warm and cool. And up here is kind of greenish and magenta on the opposite side of the color wheel there. Um, so if we want to warm this up a little bit, we can grab it over and warm it up a little bit. Uh, you got exposure for brightness. You have contrast to uh, spread the, your waveform out there to get uh, brighter highlights and darker darks. 
Uh, you got your highlights, shadows, whites, everything in here that you, you basically need to um, to manipulate the basics of this shot here. Uh, I'm just going to reset all this here. I'm going to go back to my uh, and click on the Creative tab. This is kind of cool as well because now all the Lumetri looks that you had loaded from Speed Grade have been loaded over to Premiere, and all you have to do is click on the arrows here and arrow through these. And if you see something you like, let's find something kind of cinematic. Let's find one of the Cine, pa Cine Punch HDR. Let's give that a try. Actually, something a little more saturated. Let's go to one of the Fuji or Kodak things here. Uh, let's give that a try right there. If you like that look, you basically double click on it and it previews it on your clip. I'm going to go through. Oh, this one looks a little more contrasty. Let's try that one. There we go. And now, if you don't like how intense it comes across, you can just grab this intensity slider and you move it up and down. And it's very real time. It uh, updates real time. And if you want it more intense or less intense, uh, then you have some other tools here to, to manipulate that specific setting. Have your saturation. You can add more saturation to it, less saturation, completely desaturate it. You have vibrance and sharpen, a whole bunch of things you can try. Uh, this kind of kills the contrast a little bit, and the vibrance brings out the, the colors a little bit more. Uh, stronger there. Uh, so some things to experiment with. Kind of cool. Um, let's go down to the next. On the next one here, we've got curves. Uh, the curves are really I, I love this curves part here. Really easy to use. You, on the white, that's going to be basically everything. Your RGB all together. That's your brights, your darks, your highlights all together. If you grab this and create a curve, it's going to if you're used to doing a curve, uh, working with the curves, it's going to intensify um, the contrast and it makes a very cinematic look. You can also do this on just the red channel specifically. You can suppress like the the reds and the dark and the dark areas, or you can bring them up in the highlights, or you can do it the green channel or the blue channel. Very very powerful. And then even to get more power here, you've got like a, a hue and saturation curve here. And uh, you can say uh, you want to get just uh, you want to get a spike of blues here in your in your overall image. Uh, you can grab uh, these nodes here. You can add a couple nodes like this and say I just want to isolate and add some blue hues here to the to the clip. You can create a curve here and add more blues while it's leaving every, everything else alone, which is really really cool. So a lot of power in this uh, curve section as well. Now, if we go under color wheels, this is very typical for um, for speed grade. <clears throat> if you're used to speed grade, this is really cool the way this works. Uh, let me turn off my curves here in the creative uh, tab, and we're going to grab our uh, shadows. These here are um, your tonality sliders. For your darks, this brings down your darks. This one, or, or it boosts the darks or, or the mids or whatever one you're messing with. That, those are your mids and these are your highlights. If you want to bring down the highlights and bring them up or down, uh, you slide those up and down. And then you have these color wheels controlling the, the shadows, uh, the, the colors in the shadows, the colors in the midtones, and the colors in the highlights. So if you're familiar with speed grade, this will look very familiar. So if you want to warm that up, you drag it up. So there's a lot of options here, ways of just really quickly manipulating shots. Uh, now if we go down to vignette, and this is kind of a cool little feature here as well, you can add a vignette just by simply dragging up the, dragging down the amount to bring it in, or dragging up the amount to, uh, it makes kind of a, um, a negative uh, vignette, kind of highlight, or highlight on the outside as opposed to darken. This is really cool as well. A lot of really cool features, and you can mess with the midpoint, make your vignette, let's make this vignette really dark so you can see what it's doing here. You can change the midpoint, you can change the roundness of it, you can change the feather and make it really subtle. And there we go. So say we like this shot right there. The, I, I, I love this uh, this new feature. Uh, very cool. If we go to the effect controls, you'll see that this has been added, and all the numerical ver uh, manipulations of this have been right, right down under these little drop downs here. Um, once you get what you want, um, you're good to go. Let, let's let's turn. Th this is all included in just this Lumetri color effect that's been added. That's been added automatically to this clip. So I'm going to turn this off and back on to look at the before and after. And if you really, really like that, uh, you can just do like you can with other effects in Premiere. You can right click, copy, you can go to another clip. This is a completely different clip, so it probably won't work on this, but now you can just, uh, in the effects control panel of this clip, I can just do Command V and paste it, and there it is added to it. Uh, then you can actually just go in and do fine tuning manipulations with these things as well. Bring up your scopes, make sure everything's accurate, and uh, move it along. So very cool, very powerful. I uh, really love this panel and what they've done with it. Ooh, let's do this. Blue day for night. That looks cool there. 
uh, and I don't like the intensity turn it down and another another thing you can do here as well is if you do, if you once you get something that you do like let me add a vignette to this and get something that I like right there let's say that's good uh, let me look at the before and after before after very cool uh, now I can just go up to this Lumetri color panel right here I can click on this little menu drop down and I can either export this out for to use later on in um, in speed grade or you can do it as a cube you can use another uh, color correction uh, software other coloring software uh, or you can just save the preset and you can use it in Premiere if you just save the preset and type it in I'm gonna say um, vignette something I misspelled that I'm misspelling things but I don't care this vignette something and I'll misspell something just to be consistent save that now let's go back and just rearrange this for editing go to my next clip select this clip I can go over to my effects and under presets right there vignette something the ding right there I can drag that and drop it under the clip and boom I've got the same look that I've just added to my to my premiere so uh, very cool features those are the four main features that I really like I know they've added also something with the libraries here I'm not really going to get into that right now. You can, I'll probably post one on this later, but you can add photos to it to your own to share with the public. You can sh grab other people's shared items. You can buy the, uh, you can uh, purchase them from, from Adobe. You can get from their free library, a bunch of different images and other items. It's, it's very, very cool. So I'm enjoying the updates. Uh, hopefully you are too. If you have any questions, post it. Uh, just a bit of news. I am going to be. I'm going to start the Premiere tutorials over again. I'm going to be starting them with the new interface with the 2015. So I'll be looking forward to that. I will start posting them hopefully like uh, once or twice a week with the new tutorials for 2015, and it will be a full-on uh, Premiere uh, tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments, please uh, post them. And thank you.